Let's start with the highest philosophical question. Do you think human beings are fundamentally good or are all of us capable of both good and evil and it's the environment that molds how we, uh, the trajectory that we take through life? How do we define evil? Evil seems to be a situational eye of the beholder kind of question. So if we define evil, maybe I can get a better idea of Oh, and, and and that could be a whole show, couldn't it? Defining <laughs> yeah, evil. But, but but when we say evil, what do we mean? That's a slippery one, but I think there's some way in which your existence, your presence in the world leads to pain and suffering and destruction for many others in the rest of the world. So you you steal the resources and you use them to create more suffering than there was before in the world. So I suppose it's somehow deeply connected to this other slippery word, which is suffering, is you create suffering in the world. You bring suffering to the world. But here's the problem, I think, with it, because yes. I, I fully see where you're going with that, and I, and I understand it. The problem is, is the question of the reason for inflicting suffering. So sometimes one might inflict suffering upon one group of individuals in order to maximize a lack of suffering with another group of individuals, or one who might not be considered evil at all, might make the rational, seemingly rational choice of inflicting pain and suffering on a smaller group of people in order to maximize the opposite of that for a larger group of people. Yeah, that's one of the dark things about, I've spoken and read the work of Stephen Kotkin. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the historian, and he's basically a Stalin, uh, Joseph Stalin scholar. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I realized I'm not sure where to put Hitler, but with Stalin, it really seems that he was sane and he thought he was doing good for the world. He, I, I really believe from everything I've read about Stalin that he believed that communism is good for the world. And if you have to kill a few people along the way, if it's like you said, the small groups, if you have to sort of remove the people that stand in the way of this utopian system of communism, then that's actually good for the world. And it didn't seem to me that he could even consider the possibility that he was evil. He really thought he was doing good for the world. And that stuck with me because he's one of the most, it's to our definition of evil, he seems to have brought more evil onto this world than almost any human in history. And I don't know what to do with that. Well, I'm fascinated with the concept, so fascinated by it that the very first hardcore history show we ever did, which was a full 15 or 16 minutes, um, <laughs> was called Alexander versus Hitler. And the entire question about it was the motivations, right? So if you go to a court of law because you killed somebody, one of the things they're going to consider is why did you kill them? right? And if you killed somebody, for example, in self-defense, you're going to be treated differently than if you malicious killed, killed somebody maliciously to take their wallet, right? Yeah. And in the show, we, we wondered, because you know, I don't really make uh, pronouncements, but we wondered about uh, if you believe Hitler's writings, for example, Mein Kampf, uh, which, you know, is written by a, a guy who's a political figure who wants to get off. So, I mean, it's about as, as believable as any other political tract would be. But in his mind, the things that he f said that he had to do were designed to for the betterment of the German people, right? Whereas Alexander the Great, once again, this is somebody from more than 2,000 years ago, so with lots of propaganda in the intervening years, right. but one of the, the views of Alexander the Great is that the reason he did what he did was to, for lack of a better word, write his name in a more permanent graffiti on the pages of history, right? In right. other words, to glorify himself. And if that's the case, does that make Alexander a worse person than Hitler because Hitler thought he was doing good, whereas Alexander, if you believe the interpretation, was simply trying to exalt Alexander? So the, the motivations of the people doing these things, it seems to me, matter. Um, I don't think you can just sit there and go, the only thing that matters is the end result, because that might have been an unintentional byproduct, uh, in which case that person, had you been able to show them the future, 
might have changed what they were doing. So were they evil or misguided or wrong or made the wrong, you know? So, and I hate to do that because there's certain people like Hitler that I don't feel deserve the benefit of the doubt. Right. Uh, at the same time, if you're fascinated by the concept of evil and you delve into it deeply enough, you're going to want to understand why these evil people did what they did. And sometimes it can confuse the hell out of you. You know, who, who wants to sit there and try to see things from Hitler's point of view to get a better understanding and, and sort of commiserate with. So, um, but I'm fa obviously first history show, I'm fascinated with the concept. So do you think it's possible if we put ourselves in the mindset of some of the people that have led, created so much suffering in the world that all of them had their motivations were had good intentions underlying them? No, I don't. I, I mean, it, it's simply because there's so many. I mean, in the, the law of averages would, right. would would suggest that that's not true. I guess it is pure evil possible. Meaning, you uh, again, it's slippery, but you, the suffering is the goal. Not, suffering, yeah, intentional suffering. Yeah. Uh, Yes, I think that, and I think that there's historical figures that 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 one could point to, and but that gets to the deeper question of: Are these people sane? Uh, do they have something wrong with them? Are they twisted from something in their youth? Um, you know, I mean, I, these are the kinds of things where where you start to delve into the psychological makeup of these people. In other words, is anybody born evil? Uh, and I and I actually believe that some people are. Uh, I think the DNA can get scrambled up in ways. I, I think the question of evil is important too, because I think it's an eye of the beholder thing. I mean, if Hitler, for example, had been successful, and we were today on the sixth or seventh leader of the Third Reich, since I think his entire history would be viewed through a different lens, because that's the way we do things, right? Um, Genghis Khan looks different to the Mongolians than he does to the residents of Baghdad, right? Um, and I think, so So an eye of the beholder question, I think, comes into all these sorts of things. As you said, it's a very slippery question. 